clearer for I'm in the glory land way Listen to the call, the gospel call today Get in the glory land way Wanderers come home, oh hasten to obey For I'm in the glory land way Six two in your red book. Number two six two. We'll sing all three stanzas. Number two six two in your red book. I'll have it. Let us sing. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me. I know. Praises to Him I sing. Onward I go. Closely to Him I cling. Blessings to flow. I love my Savior too. And I love my Savior. And He Almighty God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, for health, and for strength. And we thank you, our Father, that we had a desire to come out this morning and assemble in your name. And we pray, our Father, that while we are here, the things that we do and the thing that we say would be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. 
Our Father, we glorify your name and we praise you and we honor you because we recognize that all the good things that we have and all the good things that we enjoy come from you. So we just thank you. We thank you for being our Father and we thank you that we have the opportunity to be called your children. And our Father, we just thank you for your son Jesus who came and suffered and died that we might have forgiveness of our sins. This morning, our Father, we pray that you would come into our midst and look on the lives and the hearts of everyone and that you would bless us with the things that you see that we stand in need of. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your kindness. And we thank you for being a forgiving God. This morning, our Father, we recognize that we have all sinned and we have come short of your glory. So we pray that you would forgive us of our sins. And we pray that you would strengthen us so that when temptation arises, we will recognize it as the work of the adversary because we realize that he's still walking to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. Amen. And our Father, as we ask for your forgiveness, we pray that you forgive, help us that we would forgive each one of our transgressions against each other. Because, our Father, we recognize that if we are not willing to forgive each other, then we won't get any forgiveness from you as well. Amen. So, our Father, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are troubled, and we pray for the leaders of this world, and we pray for peace in Jerusalem. Yes. And, our, our Father, Father, we just thank you for being our God, and we ask you to continue to be with us. As we go throughout the day and the days ahead, these and all things we ask in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. Hymn number two. Hymn number two in your red book. Hymn number two. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth stem, number two in your red book. All right, let us sing. Come, we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound, and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. To fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Number 205. 205 in your red book. Number 205. 
After which, we'll have our communion collection. Hymn number 205. We'll sing all three stanzas, number 205 in the red book. All right, let us sing. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. We oft are made to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation this life must bring to view. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we know you traveled the road to Jericho and helped a lonely pilgrim, the Bible tells me so. When earthly friends forsake us and all the world seems blue, oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. They say that many trials will come to vex the soul. And clouds will often gather to dim for us the goal. In every sad condition to lead us safely through. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. This is the communion. Before we get started, does everyone have a communion cup? In accordance with scripture, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, we are to partake of the communion on the first day of every week. It reads, now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart on the next day, spoke to them and continued his speech until midnight. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, wrote the following. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the bread that came down from heaven, whose name is Jesus. Yeah. We thank you for this opportunity that we could remember what he did for us in order to set us free. Yeah. 
thank you, Father, for all things that you have blessed us with. And it's in the name of Jesus we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. Let us access the bread. And together let us eat. The Bible says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, for this cup of blessing, we thank you again. And thank you for reminding us of what it took to bless us with the salvation that came from above. Amen. We ask, Father, that you continue to remind us and, and bless us with the forgiveness of our sins, for this is what we need, that we might be holy, that we may be one with thee. And it's always in the mighty name of Jesus that we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. Let us also take the cup, access the cup, and together let us drink. This concludes the Lord's Supper. Concerning the collection, the Bible says, on the first day of the week, we are also to take up a collection accordingly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, the Bible reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay aside, lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collection when I come. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful to you who knows how to bless his children that we might have the things that we need according to life. And Father, we just thankful for each employment opportunity that we're able to work for all of those places that we, we receive funds, social securities, pensions, all kinds of things like this. We thank you. For you make sure that your children have. And we are blessed. And we ask, Father, that as you examine our hearts, you will find us being faithful. You will find us being honest. And you will find us following your example. We know that we can't outgive you, Lord God. But we know that we could do our part to make things go forward. Thank you, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' name we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. The collection plates have been left down in front. For those of you here that would like to give the tradition away, I'm sure that many of you know and take advantage of the opportunity to give online. God bless you for that. And if you'd like to mail yours in the old way, uh, with reference to the address, you can look at the screen. It's posted on the screen. And do however you choose. My preference, brethren. I like to do things 
that make it easier on you. Because sometimes I'm not always here. I could be on a ship traveling somewhere. I could be on a plane flying. And I could just hit the button on the app. Boom. And it's right there. Isn't God good? God bless you. That ends. Hymn number 345 in your red book. Hymn number 345. We'll sing all three stanzas of number 345 in your red book. I'll have it. Let us sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, Yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and glorious morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wonders, love, and care. And then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. 650-650. After which, the next voice you'll hear will be that of the minister. Hymn number 650. We'll sing all three stanzas. Hymn number 650 in your red book. I have it. Let us sing. Jesus gave his life for ransom yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Oh, praise his holy name, salvation has been brought down. Oh, praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. Oh, go and shout and tell it the world around. Oh, tell it today. Oh, tell it today. Praise the word of God that we might win a crown. Well, tell the lost salvation is full and free. Oh, spread the news. All over the land and sea Oh, tell it afar Oh, tell it afar Praise the Lord Salvation has been brought down All alone without a friend He suffered to pay it all Yes, he paid it all My Jesus paid it all in his blessed promises, sweet victory can be found. 
Oh, praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Well, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, go and shout and tell it the world around. We'll tell it today. Oh, tell it today. Praise the word of God that we might win a crown. Well, tell the lost salvation is full and free. We'll spread the news all over the land and sea. Oh, tell it afar. Oh, tell it afar. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. There's a blessed home prepared way over in glory land. In bright glory land. Blessed glory land. I have trusted in his love and now I'm heaven bound. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, go and shout and tell it the world around. Oh, tell it today. Oh, tell it today. Praise the word of God that we might win a crown. Well, tell the lost salvation is full and free. We'll spread the news all over the land and sea. Oh, tell it afar. Oh, tell it afar. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, praise the Lord. Has been brought down. We'll go and shout and tell it the world around. Oh, tell it today. Oh, tell it today. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown. Well, tell the lost salvation is full and free. Oh, spread the news all over the land and sea. Oh, tell it afar, oh, tell it afar, praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. Amen and amen. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which comes my help. David said, my help comes from the Lord. Amen. This same Lord made both heaven and earth. Amen. The psalmist goes on to say, he will not allow your foot to be moved. Wow. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Yes, the Lord is your keeper. Yes, the Lord is your shade or your shield by your right hand. He says, the sun shall not strike you by day, uh, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And you know, the very next verse of the very next psalm says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. They said, I was glad when they said to me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. He, he said they were glad. 
and I don't know if my mic's on, I can barely hear myself, but he said they were glad. Uh, he said, I was glad when they said to me. In other words, he greeted with what they said with happiness. He greeted with what they said with joy. He was happy when they said, let's go on to the church house. He was happy when they said, let's come praise the Lord. And I'm glad to know that David had some friends who didn't mind worshiping. We, we got friends that don't mind shopping with us. We got friends that don't mind going out to eat with us. We got friends that don't mind cutting the rug or cutting the fool with us. But David has some friends that would wanted to take him to church with him. And every now and then you need a friend that's on that type of level with you. You need a friend who will grab you and say, come on, let's go on to the house of God. You need a friend that will reach out to you and say, come on, let us go worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us come together and sing Zion's song. Let us come together and pray with one another. Let us come together and commune with one another. And David said when they said that to him, he was glad. He wasn't mad, he wasn't sad or aggravated. He was glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I want you to know this morning that I'm glad to be here uh, just one more time. I'm glad to be alive, uh, glad to be uh, counted among the living in my halfway in my right mind. Blood still warm and warm in my veins. The joints don't move like they used to, but they still moving. It takes me a little longer to get going, but I still get going uh, as they say after a while. I'm glad. Uh, to see, only thing I'm a little bit agitated about this morning, James, is that that my brother preacher, a uh, friend of mine, one of my good friend, snuck in on me. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. It's good to see my brother, uh, brother Alvin L. Daniels, and his lovely wife here with us on this morning. I had a feeling, you know, brother texts you to say, "What you doing this weekend?" And usually, uh, Alvin is a uh, uh, Alvin plays chess, not checkers. You know what I mean? He, his, his mind works three, four steps away. His wife not in the head. She know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so I, I had a sneaky suspicion he was up to something, but I got the busy, got the running. And, but he's wearing a suit. They could just be the introduction if you needed to be. No, no, okay, all right, all right. Usually, as a preacher, there's a code. You know, if you come in with jeans on, we know what the deal is. But he, he kind of in between, so I couldn't tell how you're feeling, but it's good to see you. Glad you blessed us. There's others uh, who I haven't seen in a while. It's good to see you here uh, as well. It is not my intent to trouble you long this morning, and I know... Don't I know, I know, I know, I know TJ, you say every you say DJ, you say that every week. <laughs> but it never is my intent. I don't I don't have a desire to keep you alone, but there's a word uh, from the Lord. And, and and only way I know that you get it. You see, as a preacher, I have an internal praise manometer. I have an internal praise manometer that it registers amen. And amen is a word that means so be it. It it says that you believe what is said is true. And the only reason, I, the only way I'm going to know, because I can't read nobody's mind. Only God knows the heart. Amen. The uh, only way that I know that you're getting the message. Amen. And so when the threshold is hit, uh, uh, the message uh, will be yours. Amen. And so it's not my intent, as I said, or my design <laughs> to trouble you alone. But let us be standing. Let us be standing. If you are present, if you are able, and if you love the Lord, let's be standing on our feet for reading of the scripture text. And while you're standing, I want you to take your Bible, your personal copy of the pages of inspiration, hold it up in the air, hold it up in the air and repeat after me. When I'm in worship, I read my Bible. Because I don't want no preacher lying to me. Yeah, you got to check it. Make sure. Joker will tell you he need a jet. Amen. I ain't mad at him. I just can't find a text for it. If it was, I'd preach it. Amen. <laughs> Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew, the chapter is number six. Uh, for focus on our message, we'll begin at verse number 16 and conclude at verse number 18. Matthew chapter six. We'll be reading verse 16, verse 17, and verse 18. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you have a reliable translation, it should not differ significantly. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 16. All that have it, confirm it by saying amen. amen. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites, 
with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasted. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I read for you the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6, verses 16, 17, and 18. Let all those who agree and believe that the Bible is the word of God say amen. amen. You may have your seats at this time. We watched a great Super Bowl last week. At least I think. Uh, One that was better than most that I've seen lately. Along with these big games, the media supplements them uh, with big stories and behind the scenes exposés. One of the biggest stories every year is the NFL's Walter Payton Award, which is their Man of the Year Award. This award recognizes an NFL player for his excellence both on and off the field. The Walter Payton or Man of the Year Award was established in 1970. And in 1999, it was uh, renamed for after the late Hall of Fame Chicago Bears running back, uh, Walter Sweetness uh, Payton, who died that year. Each team nominates one player who has had a significant positive impact on his community. They go all out for charity. Each nominee is an art to be commended. Congratulations to Kim Hayward for winning the award uh, this year. And as they announced uh, the winning by Cameron Hayward, uh, my mind went to another Cameron. Uh, Cameron Jordan, who was a nominee back in 2021. Cameron Jordan is a veteran defensive end for the New Orleans Saints. And at the time of his nomination, Jordan was quoted by commentators as not having an official nonprofit organization or foundation. He had one simple goal, and that goal was to make his number in volunteer efforts every day single year. That's astonishing for me because he wears number 94. He want, that means he wants to participate in and financially support 94 volunteer efforts every single year. That means he desires to reach out 94 times. His goal is to make an impact on 94 occasions. That's 94 instances of giving back. That's 94 acts of kindness, that's 94 kind-hearted deeds, 94 charitable events, 94 occurrences of compassion, 94 demonstrations of care and concern for others. There are only 52 weeks in a year. That means at least once and most weeks twice, he's helping someone less fortunate than himself. And if you think about it, is it easy to understand why he doesn't have a foundation? You see, foundations in and of themselves require time and to organize, to establish, and to keep running. Foundations require solicitation and fundraising. Foundations require public agendas and press releases. Foundations require being in the public eye and garnering their support. If you're going to do a lot of helping, if you're going to reach out 94 times in a single year, you don't have much time to waste on publicity. You've got to be busy doing the business of people every single day. And I just can't help this morning to think that that's that's the kind of people that God wants us to be. A people who move and act fervently behind the scenes. I know this ideal is countercultural. Everybody wants publicity. We 
post on Facebook while on vacation. We broadcast to the world the meal even before we say grace. We share photos on Instagram and Snapchat. We provide public commentary on Twitter. We comment on industry trends on LinkedIn. We are always connected. We are always in the public life. Everyone is always sharing openly. No secrets are hidden for too long in this world in which we live. But I contend there are things in life that ought to be kept secret. There are things in life that ought not to be shared with other people. There are things in life that not, ought not be told to anyone else. I contend that there ought to be a secret life for Christians. I, I came by the church house to ask you for the final time, are you trapped in the closet? I said, are you trapped <laughs> uh, in the closet? And if you're not, then maybe you ought to be. I'm not saying that our lives should be full with secrecy. I, I know that that secrecy has a negative connotation. But there are some things in life that we ought to keep secret. Somebody say amen. There are some things in life that we don't have to tell everybody else. There are some things in life that we ought not brag and boast about. Jesus, in his most prolific sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, began to tell us there are at least three things that we ought to keep secret that we ought not tell in a soul about. He told us that we ought to keep secret uh, about what we give to other people. Uh, in our preceding text, he says, I want you to give in such a way that the right hand don't know what the left is doing. There's some things in life that we ought to do that we don't have to tell somebody. We don't have to share with everybody. By the way, when you go to help somebody, if you go to help me, somebody say, hey man, I don't want my business in the street. I don't want everybody to know what you're doing for me. If I was proud of being in the situation I am, then I probably wouldn't ask for your help. But I'm ashamed as it is to ask for help. I'm ashamed as it is to be needed. I don't want to have to depend on nobody. And so when you're coming to help me, I don't need you to put my business in the street. Jesus said when you go to help, when you go to alpha assistance, when you go to support somebody else, don't let the right hand know what the left is. Some folks, when they help you, they want to tell everybody. Uh, I once read a book that said that gifts are seldom free. Amen? Uh, um, gifts are seldom free. Most time when people give you something, they want some in return. Uh, somebody say amen, but brother, you say it was a gift. Yeah, it was a gift, but I still expect something. See, either I want what I give you back. I want something else in kind, uh -huh. or I want the gratitude or the prestige associated with it. You ever have somebody help you, and then they, all they do is talk about it? Hey, man, oh, I helped them get on their feet. Uh, and when they was uh, had that little baby by themselves, baby daddy left them all alone. I used to keep the baby. I, and if you do that to me, I don't want it. Amen. Jesus said, Amen. Jesus said there are some things that ought to be secret. When we give and we care and we show help for somebody, that ought to be secret. Amen. We need to keep that in the closet. Amen. Amen. Then he said our prayer life. Amen. And I'm glad Jesus dealt with it because we like to pray big. You know, amen. Brother Dan, it don't happen at Midtown, but I, I pray mentioned down in Miami, in the, in the South area, that, that there's some folks that, that, that act up. You know what I mean? They go to pray big. You don't even know they even knew how to pray it, until they stood up on Sunday morning. They kids look and say, Daddy know how to pray. And they look around and they don't know what's going on. But when you said, when you pray, he said, don't be, man, don't be putting on a show. Uh, don't be acting like you all pious and don't act like your stuff don't stink. Don't act like you just commune with God. I know how it is. You stop drinking coffee because you and God have tea and you flavor your tea uh, with honey and lemon and you don't use anything unnatural and you don't gave up meat. Shame on you. And this is how you live uh, uh, and this is how you cover yourself. Uh, but God said when you pray, uh, go into your closet. Amen. And don't let everybody know, oh, I'm just going, I'm praying he said, when you pray, go into your closet. That's why we call this trap in the closet. Because when you go in your closet, he said, go in your closet, stay in your closet, and don't worry about what go on outside the closet. Then we need to look at the text. He said, go in the closet. He said, when you pray. Verse number five of our text, he said, don't be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray. Standing in the synagogue. We know one or two people like that. And on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. They doing it for show. He says, oh, surely, surely, no doubt, I know, I say they have their reward, but you, watch the text, verse number six. We covered this last week, but we need to be careful about it. He says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, huh? And when you have shut your door, 
pray to your father. This is one of these texts that's so uncommon in the Bible. This is one of these texts. So usually the focus is away from us. The focus or design of the text is to draw us away from ourselves and toward God. But this text draws us toward God in a way that focuses on self. I follow the text. He says, but you. Uh-huh, talking to you. Mama used to say, uh, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you know, used to look around and, yeah, no, I'm talking to you. And my other mama, she used to just peer down and look at me. And she said, no, we talking to you, not nobody else. He says, when you, when you pray. In other words, don't be like them. You, when you pray, the assumption is, is that you pray. Huh? Some of the assumption is that you pray. The assumption is that you pray, that you have an active prayer life. Some of us only pray when we eat. Amen. And for most of us, that's five or six times a day. Is that all right? But when you pray, go into your room. He says, when you pray, he says, go into your room. And when you have shut your door. In other words, there's some things that are intimate. There's some things that are going on. There's some things that only me and God need to know about. There's some things that even my spouse don't need to know that I'm praying. Now, we ought to pray for one another. One of the things we try to encourage couples to do is to pray with one another and pray with one another. Uh, but there's some times when you need to be by yourself with God. There's some times that we need to dedicate to be alone with God. He says, when you pray, go into your closet and when you have shut your door. Y'all see that? All these things are about you. The assumption is that you pray. The assumption is you have a dedicated space to pray. And the assumption is that you're keeping your prayer private. Amen. And you ain't letting nobody in. He says, when you pray, go into your room, go into your, when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in, who is in, who is in the secret place. Amen. Uh, <sighs> Secrets. Amen. Your father's there. Uh -huh. He said, and the father who sees in secret uh -huh. will reward you <sighs> Amen. and he said when you pray don't just be repeating stuff <laughs> you know we do we hear God of our sorrows God of our weary years God of our silent tears God who brought Daniel <laughs> God know who he is <sighs> we just repeating stuff uh -huh. uh, we just repeat we talked about this last week God is great God is great let us think of us from his hand with now I lay me down to see that. Pray like. Vain repetition. It's good for kids, but y'all grown people. All right. When you pray, do not use vain repetition, for they think it will be heard for many words. Therefore, don't be like them. For your father knows the things you have need before, before you ask him. So if he knows what I need, then why am I praying? We talked about this. Prayer is conversation with God, Amen. right? Amen. Conversation drives relationships of all types. If the, prayer, if the relationship is wrong, the conversation is broken. Amen. Conversation, communication. Yes. If the relationship is wrong, the communication has broken down. If the communication has broken down, the relationship will go wrong. In other words, God knows what you need, just like mama knew what you need, but she still wanted you to ask for. What does God want? God wants a relationship with you. God don't want to be the vending machine of your life. The only time you talk to him is when you need something, and when you ask for it, you want it instantly. God wants to be in conversation with you. God wants to be in communication with you, because when you're communicating with God, you getting closer to God. And if you keep getting closer to God, uh, you might like me. <sighs> see, see we, we go through stuff sometimes and we get distant from God because we stop talking to him. Uh -uh, come on now, you ever argue with somebody? Amen. Some of y'all arguing this morning. Amen. And then you don't talk to one another. And then what happens is then nothing gets done. Uh -uh, come on now. Well, maybe it's just me. When I get mad. I don't want to talk. I don't want to say nothing. Matter of fact, the less words you say, the better. Amen. Uh, but in our lives, when we talk, when we have God, when we are dealing with God, he wants you to talk to him. Amen. He knows, Amen. but he wants you to communicate because when we're talking, that's, that's how we get closer. Amen. And when we're sharing, uh -huh. we get on a different level. And then if we're on a different level, then, then I probably won't struggle like I do. Amen. All right. Now, now we know. Wait, wait. He says, well, your father knows uh -huh. 
what you need before you ask. And so in this manner, pray. Then he gives us the model prayer. It's the disciples prayer. We call it the Lord's prayer, but it's the disciples prayer. He taught them how to pray. And he tells you, he says, our father, hallowed be your name. By the way, when you pray to God, before you start begging, uh, say thank you. <laughs> uh, before you start begging and asking, you know, come on now. I'm not the only one who beg when I pray. Amen. Amen. He says, he says, our king, your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And verse number 12, forgive our debts. Huh? Forgive our debts. That's both money and trespasses. This guy's a dual meaning. Forgive our debts as we forgive. Oh, boy. We got to forgive the people that owe us. Uh, amen. They ain't gave the money back. I know. <laughs> Probably not going to. That's why you ought to give. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep saying this. Church, we, we, stop, we should stop loaning people money. Amen. Give them what you can afford to give them. Amen. The last thing I need when I'm in debt is another loan. Amen. Huh? Amen. Last thing I need in, when I'm in debt is more debt. Amen. Huh? Amen. And if I ain't paid MasterCard, Visa, Discover, I'm probably not going to pay and by loaning you, now I don't change the relationship. Uh, Daniel's, the Bible, Proverbs says the borrower is slave to the lender. There becomes this master-servant relationship, and now we all are awkward. And things feel kind of, you know what that means. You know, no, no, I, I loaned you $5, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and now you got some new Nikes. Yeah, but yeah. I ain't got my $5 back. Uh, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. At least that was a problem when I come. I'm working on it, but if I, if I loan you something, yes, sir. in my mind, you should not get anything new well, until I get all my money back plus. Yeah. Come on now, y'all. Am I the only one? How they pull up in a new car? I just loaned them two fifty. He says, look, forgive debts. Forgive it. Here's another thing. TJ, I'm learning this. Forgive it. You ain't giving it back no way. <laughs> you might want well to let it go. <sighs> and lead us not into the dim- temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So be it. That's what that word amen. He then is this caveat, right? He says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also what? That, don't, that, that ought to keep us all up at night. Amen. The, the, the implication is, my, the stuff I'm holding on to is going to negatively impact my prayer life. Because it's intertwined. Beyond that, I'm letting you hurt me twice. You hurt my feelings. Now I'm holding on to that hurt. And now I'm going to have gate trouble. Because I won't let it go. You're hurting me. You, you're allowed. The last thing I want to do is let someone hurt me, keep hurting me. Amen. <sighs> Forgive me. They're trespasses. Your heavenly father will also forgive you. And just because Jesus knew what he was doing, he said it both ways. Because some of us would try to slide out of it. He said, well, I forgive people, they forgive me. He says, but if you do not Forgive men their trespasses. Neither will your father. Now, that's not a problem for some of us because we think we don't sin. But the rest of us, you know, some people, they don't, they don't, man. They don't. Now, prayer life, give it. Keep it quiet. Hmm? Keep it secret. Last part. Of our text, our scripture this morning. Moreover, when you fast. Now, the text starts with the word moreover, above and beyond. Uh, that means this go with the other thing. Huh? Uh, fasting and prayer go together. Let me say that again. Fasting and prayer go together. Jesus would say in another text, he says, this type of thing only occurs with fasting and prayer. There, there, there is some benefit to your prayers when you fast as well. Uh, because you're sacrificing, and then you're dedicating, and then you're focusing, and you're concentrating. And that 
uh, uh, enhances your prayer life. He says, moreover, on, on top of that, so he's dealt with prayer. He says, moreover, on top of that, on top of these other things, he says, when you fast. You see how that reads? The assumption is that you do fast. When you fast. That's one of those disciplines in the Church of Christ we've gotten away from. The assumption is that you do fast. So he says, when you fast. In other words, you're doing it. Huh? When you fast, do not be like, y'all know what a hypocrite is. Oh, somebody say amen. Do not be like the hypocrites. What do they do? Y'all remember the, the, remember the formula, huh? In these texts, there is a general prohibition, then there's a specific Right, and then he talks about there being an absence of a reward, and then, and then he tells us the desire actually and the positive reward. That's the that's the formula. And he says, so when uh, when you fast, assuming that you fast, and uh, there's a, there's a couple of us in here, amen, that could use some more fasting, amen. I do a lot of prayer. Oh, come on now. Do not be like the hypocrites. This is the caution. This is the prohibition. Don't be like the hypocrites. What do they do? With a sad countenance, a, with a sad face, they fast, but they look all poo-poo about it. That's a hard one for me. And, and, and when I try to preach a sermon, I try to preach the DZ first. And, and I try to look at myself and say, well, 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 how does this text impact me? Anybody like me? When I'm hungry, I'm hangry. Amen. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's two things I need. Uh, uh, well, there ain't just two things I need, but what a concern this topic. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, make it up. I need a little something to eat, well, and I need my coffee. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I need my coffee. Amen. Alvin, don't look at me like that. <laughs> every now and then, Alvin got a picture of a coffee uh, mishap that he texts me every now and then. I hope he deleted that by now. Forgive me and their trespasses. Uh, but but I, I need my coffee and I need a little something to go with it. And, and, and if I didn't have my little something to go with it, I'm irritable. Uh, I, I am irritable. I'm agitated. What well, they say, bro, Washington, you like that all the time? Well, above that, um, I get hangry. Huh? And so fasting implies a deprivation. It, it ain't like what we do. We ain't ate in an hour and a half and we hungry. Amen. That's not what fasting is. Fasting is to go without. It's to give up a meal, not a delayed meal. Amen. We fast for three hours and then we double down. Amen. That ain't what fasting is. He says when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. They fast with a sad face. They want to be. So when, when we talk about fasting, I want to. I want us to understand that I don't think this is just related to fasting. I think this is relates to spiritual piety, spiritual disciplines. What he's saying is when you're doing something, you don't have to have that holier than thou look. Amen. You know how some people, they want to just look all holy and act all holy and talk all holy. And, you know, he says, when you fast, huh? don't be like hypocrites. Straighten up your face. <laughs> For they disfigure their faces so that they may appear to men to be fasting. He says they put uh, uh, cheap makeup on. Uh, 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 they disfigure their faces. They put on a clown face. And Mama used to say, wipe that look off your son. Uh, you can't got... <clears throat> Just because I'm going through something, and, and that's what I'm saying, I believe this applies, uh, just because I'm going through something, I don't have to look like I'm going through something. Um, just because I'm dealing with something, I don't have to have that. Some of us like to be martyrs. Woe's me. The world's against me. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. We, we walk around with our blanket behind us like, like peanuts, you know what I mean? And we, we want people, line us, right? And we want people to know, oh, what, what's going on? Oh, I'm just going through a lot. And I got tribulations and trials. Amen. It's vexing to my soul. Amen. Wipe the look off your face. Amen. We all go through some things. And I recognize sometimes a look is a cry for help. Amen. But it shouldn't be permanent fixation on our face. Amen. 
and it definitely shouldn't be intentional. You will get better response by communicating what's going on. Uh, you know, because the last thing, when you look like what you go through, you actually repel the help that you need. Let me give you an example. When I interview, uh, and lately I've been doing a lot of interviewing, amen, when you interview a person, the thing I seem to see, and those of you who are leaders and interview quite a few people, you can tell a person who's been out of job for a while. Amen. Uh, um, and you ain't got to look at their resume. Amen. Why? Because if you're not careful, they develop this look. You know how you can tell somebody who's been in prison? Yeah. They got a look on them. And a person who's been through a bunch of interviews... That has been looking for, but I know I say looking. There's some of they ain't looking for no job, amen. Uh, but they've been looking for a while. That and, and what we call there's this stitch we call on them, and and the work and the thing that you don't know as the person doing the interview, you say, well, this person's been out of job, and I remember thinking they got all the qualifications, but they got this. And what you don't know is if that thing is who they are. Or if that thing is a part of what they're dealing with. And so what happens is you got that look on your face and you're looking for a job and you're going to keep looking for a job partially because of the look on your face. Uh, I, I told you, I, I'm, I, I'm told you, what, what, what God tells us to do in church works everywhere because God is the master of the universe. He, he designed church life as well as our other life. And so what he's telling us is about fasting, but it applies to a lot of stuff in your life. Don't look like what you're going through. The boss said the other day, he says, man, we're going to have some meetings the next couple of weeks, and we're switching up the whole org, and he says, not a single person who cheese ain't going to be moved. And, and, and what he said, he says, not a single person. And in my mind, I'm like, yours too? <laughs> but it's not a single person. And then you can look around the room, because everybody thinking about, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's natural. I'm my favorite person. Well, if you wipe the look off, see, as he looked around the room, the comment made to me later was like, yeah, you seem quit looking like that. Amen. He said, when you're fasting and you're hangry and, 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 and you're irritated and you won't and you're everywhere you walk, you know how sometimes when you're trying to do the right thing, Brother Taylor, you're trying to do something, every time you're trying to do right, you keep running. That's what Paul said in Romans. He said, I can't do right for zero wrong. You know, when you're fasting is when they have the potlucks at work, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, in fact, and that one, one, one sister who know how to throw down uh, uh, that you are actually eat her food, bring her stuff in. Amen. Because you can't eat everybody's food. Uh, uh, and, so, and so that's when that happens. And, and that's when they have the free this and free that. And, and, and when I'm trying to cut back, it's when Chipotle sent me that thing and said, you get a free uh, bag of chips and queso. And, and, and every time I'm trying to do right. So he's saying, when you're fast. When you're exercising spiritual piety, when you're practicing one of these spiritual disciplines, you don't have to show everybody. He said, for they disfigure their faces. Why do they do it? That they may appear. They want everybody. They want everybody to know they're different. They want everybody to know what they're going through. Jesus says, or oh, surely I say to you, they have Amen. the recognition mm -hmm. is all that you're going to get. Amen. I, I told you last week, told you the week before, that when he says they have their reward, it's not that he's saying they're going to get bad stuff. Mm -hmm. He's what I'm saying is that the recognition is all that you will get. Uh -huh. See, me, when I pray... I don't want recognition for being a prayer. I, I want my prayers answered. Amen. Huh? Amen. Uh, when I do something for somebody, I don't want this pat on the back. No. I just want something to be true. Well, I help folks so that when I need some help, amen. amen. When you pray or when you fast, wipe the look off your face. He says, and don't be like them. And surely I say they have the word. Verse, uh, uh, verse number 17, what does the Bible say? But when... You fast. Again, assuming that you're going to fast. When you fast, he says, anoint 
your head. <laughs> uh -huh. And wash. Get the crust out your eyes. Huh? Put some Dax on it. TCBY. Get the brush out. You know what I mean? Get the wave brush, swim wave, whatever you need. I know what they use, the, the bees wet. Whatever they put in that your loctician told you to do. And uh, that, 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 that marked up Vaseline that they sell you. Hey, Amen. He said, when you fast, he said, anoint your head and wash your face. In other words, look like something. You're humbling yourself, but you ain't got to look like it. Amen. That's good news and good advice Amen. for the rest of our lives. Amen. You going through something? Don't let the world know. Uh, you, you and your special friend have an issue? See, I grew up with, with five sisters, six sisters. And so that means I had seven mamas. Plus my two mamas. Amen. Amen. I had a bunch of women trying to tell me. I don't mean nothing by it, but it's the truth. I had a bunch of women telling me what to do. And, and I learned a lot of life for seeing that. And, and one of the things I learned was the appropriate response to relationship adversity is to step up your game. Amen. Amen. Uh, when, when that joker don't act right, uh, uh, get yourself together, girl. Uh, I used to see it. I, I think maybe it was an excuse just to go shopping, but it was they were getting together instead of acting sad and, and, and grumpy because they, they boo let them down. What they did was they would go out to the mall. They would get their nails done, get their, uh, uh, get their toenails done, get that overly uh, badly needed pedicure and, and, and tighten up on the fade. And, and, and then they would get that new outfit on and they would get some smell goods. Amen. And, and they go buy Mac. Amen. And, and then they get that kind of lipstick that don't rub off, amen, uh, and they would go out and do some things, and even if they just went out by themselves, they weren't going to let the world know that they was going through something, and I want you to know that's powerful in two different ways. One, it draws folks to you because you get what you give off, amen. The Bible says if he is to have friends, must first show himself freely. You get what you give off. You keep giving off negative energy, and that's why you keep getting negativity. Is it, but they, get, they got themselves together. Mm -hmm. And here, I learned this in, in pharmacy school. Mr. Bailey said, one time I was sick. I think I shared this story with you before. One time I was sick. Came on campus. My clothes wrinkled and all that. And he says, well, Mr. Washington. Yes, sir. I like that. When I was in school, he would always call us Mr. Made us feel like somebody. Yes, he, said, he said, Mr. Washington. He says, uh, what's going on? Amen. I said, man, I'm sick. Right? Because I'm agitated. <laughs> and, you know, I'm short with an attitude. So he said, he said, well, what's wrong? I said, I'm, I'm sick. I don't feel good. He says, well, why are you dressing like that? Because I'm sick and I don't feel good. And I just rolled out of bed. He says, man, no, no, no. He says, when you're not feeling well, you need to dress it up. Amen. He said, because when you look good. <sighs> I'm fasting and praying. Because I'm going through a storm. Amen. And, and while I'm going through a storm, I need to feel like I'm going. I, I need to feel like something. And what I do inf influences that. Your body and your soul are intertwined. Yes, they are. Right, there are certain things that your body can't do uh, uh, while your spirit is in a certain condition. What am I talking about? Uh, it is something called cognitive dissonance. Your, your body, it just won't allow you to do What am I talking about? Next time you're arguing or having intense dialogue, uh, notice your hands. Take the time to unlock your hands. It is difficult to be combative with your hands open. Hmm? It is difficult to be resistant if you don't have your arms crossed. So next time you're in a situation, unball up your fist. <laughs> Man. Uncross your arms. Amen. When doing that, your body becomes more open. Amen. And so does your mind and your spirit. Mm. Jesus is saying, I want you to be open to the blessings and the things I'm going to give you, right? Yeah. He says, so when you fast, get out of the dumpster. Amen. He says, anoint your head, wash your face. Yeah. He says, so that you do not appear to men What I'm doing is between me and God. Amen. Amen. And if it's between me and God, I don't got to show you nothing. Amen. 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 We want to 
to show everybody for who we should be focusing on God. And he says, but your father, who is in the secret, he's right there. He's in that moment and in that place. Literally, when we're talking about prayer, he's in the closet with you, huh? Or in the room with you. But in that secret place, in your need, in the wantonness, God is there with you. Ah, and your father who is in the secret place, or in secret, literally, your father who sees in secret will reward you. I got two options for rewards. I can get the attaboy from y'all, or I can get what I need from God. And last time I checked, the Bible says all good and perfect gifts come from him. And if I want something good, I want it from him. Because his gifts come without strengths. His gifts come without stuff. Every time somebody do something for you, they want something. But God, he says, he's going to reward you. How? And so to the world, what I look like is everything's always been good. Amen. See, sometimes, we, you ever met a person, you say, man, I, as a guy, I know, everything, it's like, everything always good. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, when, it, it's not that their life is always good. Yeah. It's just that they don't show us. Yeah. It don't mean they don't go through nothing. Yeah. It's just that they're trying to tell the whole world. Yeah. And, and you know what happens is when you start, when you get what you need, sometimes. When we're in a need, and we're in a tank, and we're in a depth, we perpetuate that. Amen. We can't pull out because we keep digging. Mm -hmm. Well, God is saying, get yourself ready. Yeah. Hmm? The Bible says in, in the song, it says, wait on the Lord. Yeah. Those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Yeah. The word wait there means to look forward to anticipatory. Uh -huh. What you're doing, even in this fasting it's you're just getting ready for blessings. Amen. I'm getting ready for what God has for me. Amen. And when God gets me where I need to be, I need to look like I'm ready for it. Amen. Amen. I'm working on a job. I need to look like something. Because you don't know what that opportunity I'm waiting on a blessing from God. I need to look like that opportunity is coming. Really, it's a symbol of our faith. What does God want us from that? In praying in giving, in fasting, in other words, our spiritual disciplines, he wants you to be focused on him and not anybody else. He needs you focused on him uh, in your closet, in your room, in private. No one else has to know. We are a public people. Amen. And even though I've gotten off of social, y'all stay on as long as you want. <laughs> And even if I told you how simple it was, you'd never get off anyway. But uh, <laughs> stay on it if you want to. That's what you I'm withdrawn from that. No matter if you stay on that or not, what I want you to know is, church, there are some things that go on in your life. You don't need to involve. Anybody in here, I, don't raise your hand, it's, it's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> uh -uh. But anybody ever have COVID? Huh? I know one or two of you had COVID, know somebody with COVID, mild, moderate, several of us. <sighs> you got COVID, they tell you to isolate. Huh? They tell you not to spread it. <laughs> and what we do in life is when we go through, we spread it. We want to infect everybody. We want to own it. Out. No, sir. No, ma'am. Between me and God. God wants you talking to him because he wants you to have a better relationship with him. Amen. And that's the very best thing we have going today. Because when I'm in a relationship with God, no matter what y'all do, no weapon form. We, we say that stuff, but we don't do the thing. See, I just need to get closer to God. Because if I get closer to God, everything else is going to line up. Uh, if I get closer to God, it don't matter what y'all say. Because if it's for me, God's going to fat. 
If I get closer to God, that makes it easier for me to ask when I need. If I get closer to God, I probably won't need as much as I do now. If I get closer to God, my spirit will be in a better place. If I get closer to God, my mind will be in the right mind. If I get closer to God, I won't hurt like I've been hurt. If I get closer to God, things get better. God wants you to be close to him and not worry about what other people say. Not worry about what the world. Quit making a show for everybody. Because your father, who's in the secret place, will reward you openly. I want rewards from God. I ain't ashamed about it. I, it ain't all about my blessing because I believe as a Christian there's some things that are duty. But I do want some things. And, and the God we serve, he'll give it. <laughs> Jesus said you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you don't even ask, right? right. <sighs> Get closer to God. The Bible says, you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh. We need to get closer. Amen. That starts with cultivating an active and intimate prayer life. Amen. Huh? That starts with being charitable Amen. because God is a giver. Amen. For God so loved the world that he... And practicing spiritual disciplines in private. Amen. And that's how you enhance the relationship. If you don't have a relationship with God, you need to get one. Amen. Amen. I said, if you don't have a relationship, you need to get one. But Brother Washington, I, I, I don't know if I'm in a relationship with God. How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. The Bible over and over again is replete with examples that individuals who came to God did it in the following way. They heard good news about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now that's good news because Romans 6 says if we reenact the gospel, if we reenact the death, burial, and resurrection in that day, in that final coming, we'll be resurrected. And if so if you believe what uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you repent, that means change your heart about what you've been doing. If you confess what you believe and we'll baptize you in water, and when you do that, that sets you up. That sets you up for life eternal with God. I said it sets you up. Amen. Yeah. Hey, it don't guarantee it. Amen. Uh, what are you talking about, Brother Washington? Uh, 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 that means you got to live faithful. Amen. John Revelator said, live thou faithfully unto death. And I'll give you a crown like, live faithfully. What, what, what does that mean, faithful? Does that mean being perfect? No, sir. No, ma'am. But it means doing your best. And not doing your best in a cheap, discounted way. You know, sometimes we say, well, I did my best. No, you didn't. <laughs> Amen. It means doing what I can whenever I can. Amen. He says, live thou faithfully. Faithfulness requires a mindset that says, you know what? I'm going to do my best to follow God. Amen. And, and, and even though I mess up, I'm going to get back on. Amen. I fall down, I get back up. We got to have a rocket mentality when it comes to God. Amen. What are you talking about? Y'all remember Rocket Bible, the real rocket, not, not this new stuff that they got. Rocket used to get beat up every move. But the one thing he did was he kept getting back up. Amen. Life will beat you down. Huh? Amen. But you got to get back up. And if you keep getting up, one day you're going to get up Amen. on that great getting up day. Yeah. Get in a relationship with God. It's the best thing going. Develop that intimacy with him. If you're subject to the invitation, we invite you to come. We invite you to respond as together we stand and as together we sing. Ascended, my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die.
two or three that remain standing. We'll start on my right with Ayana. Sister Noah. Let us pray. Kind, merciful Father, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for life, health, strength. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came, bled, suffered, and died on our behalf. We thank you for that sacrifice that allows us to have a relationship with you, allows us to talk to you, uh, to tell you uh, what's on our mind. Father, we thank you for these, your children who remain standing, who uh, took a moment to express their need to stand vulnerable before us all and to ask for prayer. Father, we just ask that you watch over our family as we uh, travel throughout this week. We ask that you keep us safe, uh, watch over us. Father, we ask that you... Uh, just bless Ayana. She's been uh, dealing with a few uh, health things that we needed more discernment on, Father. And so just uh, we ask that you bless her body. Amen. Bless those who are participating in her care. Uh, and bless her mind and help her to be uh, positive and on a good spirit uh, during this time. Father, we thank you for Sister Norman, a concern for others particularly those who are at uh, Selena's office. We, we ask that you be with them in that situation. Uh, help them to resolve conflict without violence. Help them to be one on court. Help them to be unified for the purpose which they are employed. Be with Selena. Uh, help her to continue to heal as she uh, recovers from surgery and just keep her safe. Father, we thank you for James. We thank you for his efforts. We uh, thank you for allowing him to see uh, another year. Father, we ask that you bless his health, his strength, and his peace of mind. Amen. Father, be with us uh, as a people, as your church. Uh, help us to be the people that you would have us to be. We love you so much. Yes. And we thank you. We offer this prayer in our, in our own name, but in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Amen. Amen and amen. The announcements are as follows. Good morning, Midtown.
Good morning. Uh, we want to say thank you, Brother Washington, for that lovely message this morning series. Uh, you know, are you trapped in the closet? Uh, appreciate your diligence, your, your zeal, uh, your preparation. Uh, when you stand up here every Sunday morning. Uh, so thank you. I had to give you flowers. You know, people like to give flowers when people pass away. Uh, we want to give you your flowers now while you are uh, alive and well. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, sir. But for announcements, uh, first off, I uh, want to, uh, at this time, welcome any of our first-time visitors who have visited with us for the first time. Um, we appreciate you worshiping with us. Uh, we would like for you to uh, fill out the information card in the back of your seat. Uh, we would like to keep in contact with you. Uh, also, we would like to uh, hear from those who are streaming with us for the first time. Uh, you know, you have plenty of choices, but we are grateful that you worship with us this morning. Uh, if you could, please um, click the link um, on our website, uh, uh, cocmidtown.com. Click the contact link at the top of the page. Enter in your information. Uh, select other uh, and drop down box and then tell us how you enjoy the service. Uh, here are the announcements for the week. Uh, our couples ministry, uh, we're coming up on our next event. Uh, it's March 23rd. Um, it's our I Love My HBCU cookout um, <laughs> or university. Uh, here, but you, you might not went to an HBCU, but whatever university you went to. Um, the wives have received the link um, to sign up sheet for the couples to sign up for whatever they want to bring as far as supplies. Um, and or to help with the event and help it run smoothly. Uh, if you didn't receive the link, please contact or reach out to my wife, Sister Smith, uh, so she can get you that link. In addition, uh, she's been working hard on coming up with some things and how we can do a little contest. She's very competitive, but want to have fun with it. Um, and so um, we've come up with, or she's come up with a contest, right? Um, uh, it says, do you have to take, I'm sorry, do you have what it takes to make the best hot dog chili or sweets? So give me two different things, right? Maybe you don't cook well, but you bake well, vice versa. Maybe you do both. Um, so uh, the contest rules, bringing your best hot dog chili or bringing your best baked sweet, uh, sweet dish. And then uh, it says we'll, we'll judge them first, second, and third place winners for those categories. So try to have a little fun with it. Uh, ministry's been doing well. We've uh, gotten a lot closer, had some uh, some fun uh, events. So that's going to be our next one. Also, uh, Brother uh, Washington mentioned last time about us uh, getting into a book. Um, and so if you could, for the couples at the end of service, if you could, there are some books um, in the room in the back. If you could go by, just look at the books. We want to make a decision on which book we want to uh, start reading as a couple and start working through. Um, and so please do that after service if you don't mind. Uh, lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday school is held every Sunday morning from uh, 9 to 945 in the sanctuary. Sunday school is not streamed, uh, so you have to be present. And also on Wednesdays, we have our Bible study from 7 p.m., um, and that's via Zoom. Um, these are the announcements, and I think Brother yeah. Washington has an announcement as well. One minute. I just want to remind you that next Sunday night the worship service, we have our scripture uh, Bible class at the end of the service, uh, followed uh, preceded by a music reading session with the prayer night. Thank you. I do have one small announcement, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, uh, we want to uh, ask you to, uh, someone wrote on the door in the classroom, the level of the writing suggested it was a little one. Now they wrote about Jesus, so I ain't mad at them, right? And that's good. So we just want to keep, you, keep an eye on your little folks and uh, just make sure uh, that, that, that you keep an eye on them. And if they're doing stuff, even if you, if some of us have, you know, dry erase walls, we don't have those yet at the church. So uh, we want you to just keep an eye on them. That way we don't have to spend a whole lot of time and effort uh, cleaning up the graffiti. It's not going to be a major issue, y'all, but just keep an eye on them. And if you see somebody else, child, don't, don't yoke them because not everybody, this ain't like what we used to do. Amen. If you see somebody else, child, just 
just let somebody know and we, we can approach them in a the right way. Let us be standing. And then, Rod, we're going to close us close in prayer. Gonna train my, my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. I'll join him in that land where tis no sorrows can be found. When I receive my mansion, robe and crown, oh Lord, I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. And then peace and love will always abound. Well, Lord, please reserve my mansion, robe and crown. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Holy and Righteous Father, we thank the message from Brother Deasley Washington, who was awesome. And I'm also going to make this very brief. As we go on our separate ways, we ask the Lord, bless us. We go on our jobs. We go on our school the children go to school and all the above in jesus name i pray in spirit and in truth let the church say 